Hey guys and welcome back to another video. For this video, we will be continuing with the Mask Kangaroo 2020 test for levels 3 and 4. And in this video, we'll be doing the 4 point problems. So let's head on over to number 9. Cindy colors each of the region on the pattern red, blue, or yellow. She colors each regions that touch different colors. She colors the outer ring of the pattern red. How many regions does Cindy color red? Okay, so let's get started by first coloring the outer ring red, like it tells us to do. So we know this whole outer ring is going to be red. So now which regions does it touch? Well, it touches this one over here and it touches this one over here. So we know they have to be different colors that are not red. So let's go ahead and give this one blue because it doesn't really matter what color we give as long as we follow the rules and this one yellow. Okay, let's move on. So now, if we have this one, we can see it touches the yellow one and the blue one, but it does not touch the red. So that means that this one has to be red. Next, we will go to this one over here, which touches the red and the, not the, and the yellow, but not the blue. So this one has to be blue. So you can, guys can kind of see a pattern. It goes red, blue, yellow, red, blue, yellow. So, and it goes by like the size. So we went from the largest to the smallest over here. So we just have to keep following that pattern. After blue, we get yellow, and then it goes back to the start to red. And then it asks us how many regions of Cindy color red? Well, we see the outer region one, this region over here two, and the center three. So Cindy colors C, three regions red. Okay, number 10. Lowe's looks at the pyramid from above. What does Lowe's see? So, if we were to look at this, we notice that some of these poles that make up the pyramid, they are different, but some of them are same. Like, let's color code them. This one's gonna be red over here, this uh, white one. I'll color code it, code it red. And now this one over here, let's make blue. And then these two over here, they're actually the same, if you guys notice by looking at it. So we can color code them both green. So now we know it has to be a blue, a red, and two greens. So let's go ahead and color code all the pictures or options below. So, we see here, uh, let's get all red. So the red one we can see is over here, so that's good. And now the blue one, we can see that there's actually two blues. There's this one over here, and there's this one over here, which is like the really dark pole. So it's like white, black, and then light gray. So we can see two black, or in this case, blue color coded, but we only know one of these. So that's why it can't be A, because it has two of these blue, color-coded poles, but we don't want that. Now B, let's see. So, start from red again. We see the red pole over here. Now we see the blue pole over here. And then we see the green ones over here. So it matches the color code, but it doesn't match the way it's aligned. And so, we can see that it's not, it does not match the way it looks in the picture because in this, in this picture, the greens are both uh, on the, the greens are both on the, I guess you could say, uh, same opposite side because we have a green one over here and a green one over here. But we know that we're only supposed to have 
the greens next to each other. And in this case, they go on opposite sides as shown here, which is why it can't be B. Now C. We see that the white one's over here, so the red one, sorry, if we're going by clip code. And now the blue one is over here. And the two green ones are over here. So, if we have red over here, the next one next to it should be green if we go by this. And then green again, and then blue. So, we know that C is probably our answer, but let's move on to D or E just to double check. So, we have our red one over here. We have our blue one over here. And then finally, we have our two greens here. So we have all of them again, but does it match? Let's see. So, same way, if we were to like rotate it, it seems to be like correct if we go, oh, it goes in the order red, green, green, blue. But if we were to rotate this one this way and C also this way, we know that C, if we rotate it, is going to be a red here and a blue here, like this in the front, which matches the picture. But if we were do, to, to do that with D, it would be a blue here and a red here. So that's why D cannot be our answer, because in this case it's blue here, like it's in C, and red here, also like it's in C, not like D. So that's why it can't be D. And now let's take a look at E. We have our red one here. But once again, like E, we have two blues when we're only supposed to have one. So that's why it can't be E. And so we are left with our only option, which is C. So the answer for number 10 is C. Number 11. Dennis ties his dog one meter from a corner of a seven meter by five meter hut, as shown in the picture. He uses an 11 meter long leash. Dennis places five treats as shown. How many of the treats can the dog reach? So we know that one of these little units is going to be one meter. And then this is the seven meter side, this is the five meter side. And then here is the leash with the dog and it's 11 meters. But here's the important part. We can't just like start from where the leash is and cut through here because it says we have to, it says specifically says from a corner. So that's why we can't go inside. We have to go from the outside. So it's 11 meters. So let's count 11 meters from here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So he can get all of these treats, but does not cannot get this one. And if we count the amount of treats, we see one, two, three, four. So the dog can reach D four treats. Number 12. Lonick builds a fence using one meter long poles. The picture shows a four meter long fence. How many poles does Lonick need to build a 10 meter long fence? So let's try to find some patterns because we don't obviously want to draw or count the rest. So let's find a pattern. So if it was just one meter, it would be used, it would use one, two, three, four, five, six. It would use six of these poles. But if we notice, if we were to add it another meter, it would only add one, two, three, four more poles. It wouldn't add six again. And we can see that continuing. One, two, three, four again. One, two, three, four again. So it would keep going until you reach all the 10 meters in this case. So if the first meter is six, that means the rest of the nine, I mean, if the first meter has like six poles, that means like the rest of the nine are only gonna have four as shown here. So let's first find the amount for the nine of them. And we're gonna see, we're gonna need 36 poles. And then if the first meter requires six poles, we're gonna add 36 plus six, and we're gonna get 42 poles are used in total to build a 10 meter long fence. So the answer for number 12 is E. Okay, number 13. Every time the kangaroo goes up seven steps, 
the rabbit goes down three steps. On which step do they meet? So the kangaroo goes plus seven, and the rabbit goes minus three. So in total, they're getting closer by 10 steps. So since there are 100 steps, and they're each getting closer by 10, if we divide 100 by 10, we're gonna find after 10 step after like 10 jumps or 10 steps for each of them they'll reach together because the kangaroo goes up every time seven and the rabbit goes down every time three so that means if they repeat this process 10 times they'll reach each other but now we know that the answer isn't going to be 10 because it's not they don't go one step at a time the kangaroo goes up seven and the rabbit goes down three so there's two ways we can do this, but I'm going to do the simple way, but I'll explain both. So first, if the, rap, if the kangaroo goes up ten, 7 steps, then we can multiply this by 10. And we're going to get that they meet on, the, on step 70, which is D. But another way, if the rabbit goes down 3 steps, we can multiply 10 times 3, and we're going to get 30. And then we can do 100, since he's going down, he's not going up. So we have to subtract 100 minus 30, and we're going to get 70 either way. So that's why the answer for number 13 is D. Number 14. The sum of three numbers is 50. Karen subtracts a secret number from each of these three numbers. She gets 24, 13, and 7 as the results. Which of the following is one of the original three numbers? So let's add these three numbers first to see what the new sum is. And if you add this, you're going to get 44. And so she subtracts each of these numbers from 3. So we know that there's going to be 3. So if we subtract 50 minus 44, we know that the total difference is going to be 6. But when, since she subtracts the same secret number from each of these three numbers, then since there's three of them, we're going to divide it by three to find the secret number, since she's subtracting the same number. And we're going to get that the secret number is two. So she subtracts two from each of the original numbers that add up to 50. So now we need to look at the answer choices and see which of them is two larger than one of these. For 9, we can see that it's 2 larger than 7. So that's why the answer is A, 9. But let's go through the rest of them just in case. So 2 larger than 13 would be 15. 15 is not in the answer choices. And 2 larger than 24 is 26. 26 is not in the answer choices. Which is why the answer for number 14 is going to be A, 9. Okay, number 15. Emily wants to build a crown using 10 copies of this token. When two tokens share a side, the corresponding numbers match. Four tokens have already been placed. Which number goes in the triangle marked with an X? Okay. So we know that when two tokens share a side, the corresponding numbers match. So that means that this is going to have to be three. And we can see this pattern being repeated. One, one, four, four, two, two. So three, and I've decided to take this path instead of that. It doesn't really matter. I just decided to go this way. So we have three. And now we know that the ones next to them are four and two, but which one is gonna go where? Well, if we notice, let's go back to these other examples. One, we have five and two here. Then now they're switched. It's now two and five. So five is here, two is here. So the same process is gonna be here. Two is now gonna be on this side. And four is now going to be on this side. And then from there, we can just move on. So we go next after two is one. And then after one is five. So if we go by the corresponding numbers, match again. Five is once again going to be here. And then once again, we have to do opposite. So one now goes here. Four now goes here. After four is three. And after three is two. So if we have two here, we know that it's going to, not instead of three and one, it's now going to be one and three. And so 
after one you would have five and then on the x we would have a four and so we know that the number marked with an x is going to be d four okay final four point problem number 16. Farid has two types of sticks short ones measuring one centimeter so these ones over here and long ones measuring three centimeters which of the following combinations below can he make a square with without breaking or overlapping the square, the sticks? So, before we go into the option choices, we know that a square has four equal sides. So, that means that the length of each side is going to be equal. Since like he has four equal sides, so that means the length in centimeters will also have to be equal. And since there's four sides, that means the number of total centimeters has to be divisible by four, since you can't break or overlap the sticks. So let's first look through the ones that have the total centimeters as a number that is divisible by four. So five short plus two long, so two long of three centimeters, so two times three is six, equals 11. And 11 is not divisible by four, so it can't be A. And that'll be three short and three long, so it'd be three plus, if we do three times three, we'd get nine. So we get 12. So 12 is divisible by four, so B is an option that we could have. Six short, so just six centimeters. And we know six is not divisible by four, so it can't be C. Four short and two long. So we have four plus so if we do two times three, we get six, we get 10. So we know that it can't be D. And finally, E, six. We have six times three, which is equal to 18. So 18 is also not divisible by four. So the only option we are left with is B. So therefore the answer for number 16 is B. So guys, that's all of the four point problems. Hopefully next week or this week I will post the 5 point problem, so make sure to come back to my channel for the 5 point problems. So yeah, thank you guys for watching, please like, subscribe, and hit the notification icon. And yeah, bye! See you guys next time!